welcome back to my workshop. Now I don't normally get excited by bits of leather. Bits of wood, yes, I mean you see a piece of wood got a lovely bit of grain in it and you can get excited and you think, oh what can I make with that? But I don't normally do that with leather. Which considering I work with leather so much is quite unusual. I mean occasionally you'll look at a piece of leather and you think, oh that's a lovely colour isn't it? Um, but it doesn't have a grain. But it so happens I was down at my leather shop a couple of weeks ago and I came across this piece of leather, which is the most glorious piece of leather. I'd gone with the intention of buying a piece of red leather, but what I hadn't come across before is one that's been stamped and textured in this way. So what I thought I would do with this video, because I'm in between big projects at the moment, it's too cold to start anything too big. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd see what I can turn this piece of leather into. Now the obvious thing, would be a briefcase. It looks, this would be a superb briefcase. It's nice and thick. Um, I think that would be quite a nice briefcase. You could turn it into some belts. It looks quite nice as a belt. You know, you get lots of belts out of this. It's a bit thick for anything too lightweight, so it's probably not gonna be a ladies bag. It's too heavy for that. So while I think about it, the first thing I'll do is I'll put a nice straight edge along this side, and then we've got something to work to. I've decided this is going to make the most marvellous briefcase and I've got a new method of doing corners so uh, we should be able to do this much faster. So I reckon a briefcase is 30 centimetres deep, 12 centimetres wide. That's 10. So we end up with all the way we can do that as one big piece which will make our life considerably easier. All we've got to do is cut that out. Well, there you are. That's the outside of our briefcase. And if we follow it through, that bit goes like that. That bit goes like that, and it's going to come over like that. What a lovely briefcase this is going to make. So the way to make a handle, there's several ways you can do it. Um, work out how big your hand is. Easiest way to do that is put it in a... <laughs> hold it on a ruler. My hand is a fairly average sort of size hand, five inches. So we call it six inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend that back like that bend that bit a bit like that and then sew that bit across there so we've got to come in I don't know why I always work in inches because when I'm doing wood I work in millimeters which is really quite strange this is going to be a tough piece of leather to sew I can see <laughs> if it's just difficult to cut what we're going to use is a couple of these square D's and that's going to fit on there like that. If I sew that in there like that, it will work, but it's a bit ugly, isn't it? So what I shall do is just skive these corners down a little tiny bit. So using the saddler's knife, I'm just going to cut this down a bit. Oh, this is a tough bit of leather, this is. You want to make sure you keep your fingers well out of the way of this. So what you can see is I've beveled that off now. So when it bends down like that, it's much neater. So then we've got the same at the other end. There you are, works a treat. And then this piece, we're going to cut the size. So we need a piece which is, so if we make this bit five and a half inches long. Now before I even think about sewing this together, I'll do something about that edge. It's a little bit on the raw side. Uh, in fact, it shouts at you, doesn't it? Um, so I'm going to use this edge stain. And here you are, you can see 
what a difference that makes. That's that sort of piece next to it that hasn't been stained. That looks much nicer, doesn't it? So we've now polished the edges, and I'm just going to run this divider down here and just put a little tiny line. So I know where to put the stitch marker. That's quite hard to see, but there is stitches marked all the way down there. So I'll just do the same now on the other side. So now we're ready to assemble this. So I've Slid the, uh, the rings down, now they're a little bit tight, but that's alright, we can live with that. That will sort itself out in a little bit of time. So there you go, you can see where I'm going with this. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll sew along here, and then we'll go back and do the other side, and then when that's on the case that'll be a lovely handle. Now I'm doing it the sort of typical saddler's way with two needles stitching backwards and forwards and winding the thread round the needle as I go through it. So it locks it all in place. Do a couple of stitches at a time. Now if you want to find out what I'm up to, you can always look at the blog. Details of which are on the bottom of the screen. Well recently I started posting pictures on Instagram. I quite like that, it's quite instant. Maybe that's why they call it Instagram. Um, but why not have a look, see if, you, see if it's any interest to you. So we've now made the handle, as you can see that's all sewn together really quite nicely, I'm quite pleased with that. And that's going to fit on the outside of our bag like that. And in an effort to try and keep this looking as clean as possible, what I'm going to do is use some pieces of this thin leather and I'm going to punch some holes through here, poke it through and then it'll fix from behind so it'll make it look much neater. We can then poke these like that and once that's fixed into place that's actually quite a neat fixing. That's not going anywhere is it? So that then looks like that, that one looks like that and we can make that look quite nice. Now, I have given some thought as to how I'm going to fix it. When I've done them in the past, I've sewn them in, but it, it looks quite nice. I quite like it when you sew them in, but I think we can do slightly better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in with some rivets. I tend not to use rivets very often, but on this occasion, I think it might work quite nicely. Now what I'm now doing is marking out where the folds are going to be. And normally I wouldn't use a ballpoint pen. But for these ones, I'm going to be doing something slightly different. I have a new tool to play with, and it cuts a V groove. And what this then means, that this will then bend on a much tighter radius. There you are, I don't know about you, but I think that looks rather smart. Earlier on, I did all the stitch marking, all the way down there. So 
So I shall tack this into place just like this. And then I can now spend a long time stitching that in. So you go away, have a cup of tea, and I'll see you in a while when it's done. So we've moved on and I've done a lot of the boring bits whilst you weren't watching. I've got the sides, and as you can see, I've put a little um, brass D there. So if we wanted to, we can then have a shoulder strap. And obviously I've got two, one for each side. And what I've also done is I've put what they call a folio lock here. Uh, which then means that that can then it means that can then lock like that and you start to see we've got the start of a very tasty briefcase haven't we so what I should now do is start to sew the sides in now I quite often get asked how fast should you be sewing I'm not particularly fast but I'm not bad. And the suggestion is about 30 centimetres an hour is a decent amount for hand sewing. Now this is all sewn by hand, no machine. So 30 centimetres an hour. In this particular instance, I'll go down this seam much quicker because it's a straight long seam. If you go around lots and lots of corners or there's lots and lots of fiddly bits, then that will slow you down. Now these days, I'm starting to put a lot of my products on the Fitz Wobby website. If you're interested in having some of my products, I mean this briefcase will end up on there and you'll find the details on the bottom of the screen. In the next video I shall be looking at you know, what to do with some of the offcuts that I've got. And one of the things I've recently been doing is making leather clocks. So I'll show you some of the leather clocks that I do. Um, they prove to be quite popular actually, customers seem to like them. If you want to get in touch with me, and I always enjoy hearing from people, the email address is on the bottom of the screen. Well, there you are. There's the finished case. It's now had the sides sewn in. Though I must say, I'm rather pleased with that. That's come out rather well. Um, some of my better stitching, that. I'm quite proud of it. So, now we move on. We could just sell it like that, and that would be a fine and dandy case. Uh, as my wife said, you could have a, a, it would be a lady's bag. It was quite attractive. I've gone to all the trouble of sewing these in the, the side, so we might as well use them. I've managed to get some of these sort of swivelly spring hook things. I've got a couple of pieces of leather, matching leather for that, 40 millimetres wide. I'm just going to make a strap to go up and over. Now, You probably could do it with one length of the strap. It's close. It's not quite enough. So, as they say, why spoil a ship for a ha'porth of tar? So it's costing me an extra piece of leather, but so what? It means we end up with a much better product. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you've seen me make straps before, um, nothing's gonna be very different apart from the fact that I'm going to put some of these on the end. So effectively I'm just going to make a belt but with two pieces. So as you can see when you make a bag like this it's just a slow process and it is a very slow process it's probably taken me two days maybe slightly more start to finish to actually do this. So it's never going to be a, a cheap product purely because the amount of labour involved. But what I can say with this particular bag is there'll never be another one like it. I've used a piece of leather for this bag, which is quite unique. 
I've never come across a piece of leather like it before. Um, and I doubt if I come across another one. There you are, the last stitch is done. All we've got to do now is put it together. Is it a briefcase? Is it a satchel? Who knows? Who cares? Um, all I know is it's nicely made and I'm rather proud of it. I think it's a nice job. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you press the subscribe button or the like button. Take your pick. If you do both of them, then I'll be really happy because it makes quite a difference to my life. If you like this video, have a look at some of the other ones. You never know, you might enjoy those as well. There's always that danger. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you what I do with the offcut. I've got this one piece of leather. What can I do with it? I've got plenty of choices. So make sure you look out for the next video and find out what I do with it. In the meantime, this is done. I'm going to enjoy it. But I shall put it on the Fitzrobbie website. So if anybody wants a unique bag, you know where to start going to look for it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.